Do you have a problem with noxious weeds and lantana in particular? Come along with us and we'll show you how to eradicate it effectively, quick and easy. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got with me Rob and Gary. I've asked them to come and give me a hand um, with the bush regeneration. Now Rob is a horticulturist, but he specializes in bush regeneration. And I met Rob uh, back uh, probably about 10 years ago uh, when I first bought these 37 acres, these 15 hectares, uh, and I wanted to develop the property and put a house. And so uh, council suggested that I uh, learn how to maintain my property by eliminating the noxious weeds. And so I started going to bush care with Rob, but there was a bit of a situation back in June 2017 where I damaged my back and had to have an emergency surgery and I'm left with permanent nerve damage which is called corda equina and so uh, I did eventually go back to bush care after about two years. Funny enough the plant that I most enjoyed to eradicate was lantana. Uh, lantana is fast growing especially in a wet climate and we've had a lot of rain in the last couple of years and it's taken off. So I did have a letter uh, sent to me by the Hawkesbury River council after they did an inspection of this whole area and they've uh, nicely asked me to uh, to eradicate uh, the lantana. Now I have been doing it over the years but um, now it's gone a, a little bit more viral. I'm going to have to put more effort in to, and, uh, and be a bit quicker with it. So um, Rob, how should we approach uh, the lantana today? First thing you need to do is identify the natives that are amongst it. It's very important so you know what you're going to save and leave behind because in bush regeneration it's about the bush taking over where the weeds were. So by removing the lantana, if you've got a foundation of natives, you're going to be fine. So we've got um, different types of wattles, we've got some uh, lily pillies, some calistamins. But the major problem here is lantana, is we, 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 that, that's what they've identified, is that what you see as well? Yes, definitely. Lantana. Okay, there is another problem with mother of millions, and so the botanic name for mother of millions? Bryophyllum. Okay, and so they wrote it on this report, uh, which I have with me, uh, and so we'll be just uh, mainly concentrating on lantana, but also mother of millions, just a little, just to show you how to uh, remove that uh, without having it come back so quickly. So because there's so much lantana, it's such a big job, uh, I went down to my local mower shop, Emu Plains Mowers, and Michael, who was really fantastic, showed me all the different hedges that he had uh, on display. Now the problem is with my back, I'm not able to hold a hedge trimmer out too far because it, it does hurt me and I can't do it for long periods. And as you can see, the lantana is everywhere. So you've got to reach out to it. So I end up getting a long reach hedger. And this particular one is a dual purpose. So the brand is Bush Ranger uh, and Bush Ranger is quite a good brand. And so this is the attachment that you add to the hedger. So Bush Ranger Power Equipment started in 1968 by Roy Gripsky and now has branches all around Australia. And I will put a link below if you're looking for some of the equipment. Um, so Michael went through the whole range and this one was probably the best suited for me. Uh, it is a four stroke mower, which is not what is common, uh, but I chose a four stroke because uh, not to confuse my fuels. I know it probably sounds silly, but that's what I've done. And this particular model is the, the cheaper version of their range um, because I, I'm not going to be using it commercially so I thought the MT2501 would be probably appropriate and I have got my own harness and this will carry the hedge trimmer for me while in awkward situations so I can turn it twist it uh, and tilt it and so uh, I will show you in a minute how to actually change the attachment it's quite quick and easy so with lantana what you've got to do is first trim it down to expose the trunks and then with a lopper you go straight down a ground level you cut them off and within 10 seconds you've got to apply glyphosate on there so the glyphosate that I buy is highly concentrated um, which is used for multiple different plants but in this case here what we're trying to do is allow the poison to go within the root system and kill off the plant from within so this here is a one-to-one -one mix so it's one uh, part water one part glyphosate and I put a, a dye in there in this case a blue dye so I can actually see how well it's painting on and just a quick history on the lantana and how it came to Australia do you guys know how it how it happened yeah, it was brought to Australia um, as an ornamental plant to be used as a hedge. 
um, because the Apparently the person who brought it in didn't like fences. And uh, by 1920, uh, it became a, uh, classified as a noxious weed. Uh, and since then, it's just taken over the whole sea, uh, eastern seacoast of, uh, of Australia. Yeah, and even down to island areas because the seeds can be carried by the wind and okay, birds. And birds. All right, guys, uh, now I'm going to show you how uh, to set up the uh, hedge trimmer, the long reach hedge trimmer, and, uh, and then we'll get into it. Okay, so change it from a brush cutter to a hedger. You pull this little pin here outwards and that just slips out. It's so easy. And you get the 85003 attachment, which is the hedger. You place it back in the same hole, just twist. Feel it slips into place, pull your pin again, and just twist until that pin locks in. Then you lock this off. Okay, so now we're ready. We'll put on our PPE. Uh, I'll also put my harness on. Okay, so we've also got some goggles, and I've got my gloves. Okay, I'm also gonna give some lubricant spray to the hedger. Uh, just to make that work a little better. So it is recommended that you put this on before you start and after you finish. So when you do cut plants with a hedger, it does leave a bit of a sap behind, so it's like a glue. So you really do need to spray that just to give it some lubricant. So before you start, just prime it, turn it on start, put your choke on. Yeah. So as you can see, it starts pretty quickly. Uh, I didn't have to have the choke on for so long. I'll turn it off completely now. I'm gonna tilt the hedger on an angle because I think that's the angle I'm gonna need, but I will tilt it back later if it doesn't work. What we need to do is make sure that we're protecting these natives. So we'll just easily trim with a, with a pair of secateurs just to reduce the chance of accidentally hitting it. So just another wattle. We'll just steer a bit around here. Okay, let's see how this thing works. Okay, I'm finding this angle not very good, so I'm just gonna change it to a straight position. Oops. We've got to watch out for. Yep. We've got some wildlife in here we've got to watch out for. That's incredible. What is it? It looks like a water dragon. Wow. Thanks for pointing that out, Rob. Okay, so what we've got is we've cleared most of the stuff from the top. We've got a clear vision of where these stems are going into the ground. So we're not cutting individuals and using lots of poison. We're gonna try and reduce it down to one lot of poison. So we're gonna cut low. So Gary's gonna do a cut. And using all his brute strength, here we go. Good job, guys. Okay, now on the stem, we've got this little bit here. I hope you can see it. Now all the energy and the juices of the plant are around the outside, so we're going to try and get around the edge. That's the most important bit. Okay, it's called the cambium layer, and that's where we get the poison in. The middle is just for water to come through, it doesn't really do anything. Now on the outside, it's going to take the poison into the root system, kill it off. The more you disturb the soil, 
the more you're going to cultivate any seeds that are here to regrow and you don't want that you want as minimal impact as possible so that's done we'll get on to this next one so Gary's going to do the cut that's a great pair of loppers you got there Rob yeah they work really well and especially with a muscle man like Gary with it <laughs> if the stem is thicker than the handle of your lopper you might need to use a saw okay and we've only got one more to go so if I hold this up doing a great job there Gary oh, wow okay, beautiful job we need to keep this as clean as possible okay and that's done and Rob how long would it be before any kind of regeneration might occur if we've missed anything if we missed anything uh, we're coming into spring now, so a um, couple of weeks it'll start to show its head. And they just pulled those out. I remember when we uh, were working on Bellbird and Clissold Reserve, uh, when we did the Lantana, uh, it would stay away for like two or three years, and then little ones would pop up and we'd just take them out or poison them, and it worked really, really well. Yeah. Look, that's the importance of getting the poison right. This plant is dead. It's, it's gone. Um, what your regrowth you would have seen was the seed seedlings coming up. Okay, great. Thanks, Rob. We'll get in and do the rest of it. Okay, so now we're on the other side of the property uh, where Hawkesbury River County Council have identified some mother of millions. Now, my neighbour Mark is a great guy. He's been pulling a lot out for me, but there is still a little bit around. So this is the mother of millions. The flowers are dying off now, um, and there's a little bit in this area. So um, I'm going to ask Gary, because he's been in bush care for a long time, uh, and, uh, and just show us how he takes it out and what we need to do. I was going to ask you as well, Gary, do I need to put any poison on that? No, not, well you can, but we don't need to. We can easily pull these out by the roots. Okay. As long as we're uh, careful and trying to not drop any leaves or seeds. All right. If you show me and, uh, and we'll both get into it. Okay, well, this is soft ground, so they come out of the ground very easy. If we put it in the bag head first so we don't drop any leaves on the ground. Yep. So you just go all the way to the roots and pull all it out? All the way down to the roots. These are long roots. Here. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so that's the root system. It's not huge, but I have seen some with a little longer. Uh, so, um, Gary, um, I met you uh, probably about eight years ago, a couple of years after I joined Bush Care with uh, Rob. Um, you took a bit of time off, but you, you started with Bush Care a, a long uh, while before I did, didn't you? Yeah, about 20 years ago, I think. Wow. Uh, down at this old reserve. I've got to be honest, uh, the thing that attracted me the most to Bush Care was the fellowship. Well, that's right. That's what made it uh, worth turning up. It's not turning up just to pull out weeds is not all that exciting, but then you've uh, got some good camaraderie and yeah. good conversation. Yeah. It was, uh, it was good fun. I used to love the way Rob would bring his uh, bush tea and he'd make it from his... Uh, made in the billy. In the billy. I love that. And he used to occasionally bring... <laughs> That's sweet. What was it? Nam Namura. 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 Beautiful. Yeah. The heart starter. Heart <laughs> This is quite easy to take out, isn't it? I think the crucial yeah, part is that you've got to bag them. I think that's the most important part. Yes. You don't leave anything behind. Otherwise, you'll come back in a short while and they'll all be back. Okay, so we're done. Very good. We just put another bag in that um, and uh, we'll throw that in the bin so it can't reproduce. Gary, thanks very much for helping and thanks for around the other side. Uh, we've got a bit more to go, but uh, we're almost there. Good. Great to see uh, results after a little bit of work. So once we've um, finished this area, we've got a cleared area. It's not on the native grasses, um, which we want to extend through the area to protect the soil. So we're going to roll all this excess back over the dirt area that'll mulch down and um, slow down the uh, recurrence of any weeds coming up hey thanks guys thanks for coming thanks for uh, giving me some of your time and thanks for your expertise um, the work we've done today uh, we've done this in about two hours um, there's a lot more work to be done but I'm just going to do it slowly uh, the harness really did help me carry the uh, uh, hedge 
trimmer. Uh, the MT2501 was pretty good. I've still got to learn how to use it. I'm probably going to have to go back to Michael for more training. Um, and the 85003 extension uh, really cuts well. I'm very impressed with that actually. So I will put a link below for Michael from Emu Plains Mowers and also for Bush Rangers products uh, for their link. Uh, and you can find your local distributor in your area. And if you're concerned about the uh, water dragon we found, while we were having our morning tea break, he found a safer place to go to, so his, his <laughs> will. No animals were harmed during the production of this <laughs> video. <laughs> So I hope this video helped you in controlling your lantana. And if you have any comments, please leave them below and I will get back to you. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And I'd ask if you please consider to subscribe, hit the like button and share this video. And there's many more videos to come. Thanks guys.